Hey guys, how are you doing? It's been a while since I last time do a video on the uh, tropical plants uh, because of my work schedules and all the pandemic craps going on. Anyway, I have a person request me to do a video on the um, guide on planting the white champaga and how to take care of it. And so here it is. Um, well, this is just a little uh, basement, uh, semi greenhouse that I set up uh, to keep these plants uh, well throughout the uh, winter and so far they're doing very well down here actually I'm just giving you a brief uh, shoots of my plants all down here and then we'll go on into uh, explaining how to take care of the white champaga okay this is my second room down here as you can see I have a uh, figs uh, orchids um, and Chinese Sambidians, an orange jasmine over there, and a Ning tree down here. If I can get a good shot of this orchid. Okay, we're back into the first room here, and um, this is Symbidians, and this is uh, called a sweet olive, a sweet olive and banana shrub, and uh, another figs. Okay, now back to Champaga. Okay, you see why Champaga is doing very well. You see all the leaves and stuff, and actually. There's some flower bugs forming already over here. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna switch to manual focus. This thing. Uh, see, see that? Right there. That's a flower bud, and um, there's one I think bloomed already because I can smell it when I come down here. It smells really good. There's another one right over here. Well, let's see if I can. Yeah, never mind. It's a uh, another one down here. Let me see if I can get you close enough to, yeah, another one right there. So overall, it's been very healthy. You can see the leaves, um, very dark green, very um, healthy. And now the person asks, how do you take care of white champaga and the container? Now, um, one thing I do recommend is that um, try to go, like if you have, the size I have right now, then you need a big, bigger pots. I try to get a clay pot that size. Let me show you my the size of the pots I use. Can, can you see it? Yeah, it's it's pretty big, but it's not clay. It's a uh, plastic. The reason being is that I couldn't find a clay pot that big. And also, the thing about clay pots is that uh, that size is way gonna weigh a lot of. It's it's gonna weigh a lot. And uh, for me, move from the basement to outside. Oh, it's gonna kill my back. But but anyway, but if you have a white champaga plant, it's only a branch size like this. You can just use one of these clay pots, your terracotta clay pots like that. And it's it's better for the roots. Um, for my experience, all these years of uh, using clay pots, you probably can see that most of my plants here, I use clay pots not the uh, plastic unless i don't have option um although there's a one clay pot really really big but it costs over a thousand dollars so I, I don't know it's too much for me but anyway back to the white champaga white champaga number one rule is it loves sunlight but not strong sunlight uh i mean what i'm saying not strong sun like uh, summer mid-afternoon sun it'll burn the leaves. Why Champaga likes like, you know, one of those uh, morning area, not windy with uh, sunlight shining on it. And then afternoon it gets partial shade and then, you know, humid season. That's where it thrives the most. For me, I try to do my best, pick a location within outside my house, within my property and put it there. But anyway, for the uh, potting material, I usually recommend uh, like uh, perlite, uh, uh, peat moss. What I did was uh, 
whatever I have a white champaka leaves falling down, I cut the leaves. Uh, here, let me see if I can show you. I cut the, I cut, I, uh, you see all these, uh, probably not a good view, but let me see if I can make it brighter. Uh, let's do this. Okay, um, I try. I cut the leaves down into a smaller pieces and then just put on top of the pots. Remember, leaves act as some kind of a organic fertilizer as well. And um, why Champaka loves acidic um, potting mix. Acidic means like anything like organic. Um, and although there are a couple websites claiming that uh, Champaka can do it just as well on the alkaline soil, like clays and stuff. Uh, I don't think you should risk that because from my experience, Champaga doesn't like wet roots and alkaline like clays and stuff, they give you, they just suffocate the roots. And why Champaga loves have breathable potting mix. So if I were you, if you want to do the potting mix, I would go with like, let's say the pot is 100%, we go with 30% perlite, uh, maybe 50% peat moss and then 20% uh, sphagnum moss. Now let me show you what kind of sphagnum moss I use. Uh, let me just show you some other plants real quick. Uh, all right. You see the moss I use on top? It has a little thing, you know, all these, uh, all the stuff growing on top. It's okay. It just, I think it just adds like the good look to it. It makes the plants more, you see that? It's on my symbionts, it's a more natural kind of a habitat type. For, I mean, it's everybody has different tastes. Some people just want to kill them all. Those, uh, but let me show you what my sphagnum moss looks like. Okay, this is the type of sphagnum moss that I use. It's called um, New, Premium New Zealand Sphagnum Moss. And uh, I bought a ca two cases actually of it in uh, eBay. And, uh, kind of uh, make a good deal with the, uh, see, this. Uh, now there, um, there are ways to determine if the sphagnum moss is good or bad. Like uh, the good ones, usually like, let me show you, like you can see like the good ones, you can tell it's very white. And once they're soaking water, it's very puffy. And, um, and it basically is a premium quality. Now, let me show you the difference. You see this one right here, this ingredient right here, um, the uh, sphagnum moss that I use, is a cheap one that I bought from Home Depot. Uh, let me see if you can see that. Um, let me move it over here, maybe easier that way. Let's put it right here. You see, when it dries up, the uh, the moss is all black, and it doesn't have the spongy uh, doesn't have the spongy look. To it. You see that? It's it's all I don't know, it's dirty looking. Now compare that to this to this one right here. I just plant it. Um, you see the premium moss. It's all white and it's all full. It's very spongy, very, very spongy, and uh, it absorb obtain retain water very well. But anyway, let's go back to the uh, Shampaga. Now, okay, now we're back here uh, with the Champaga. Um, I talked about a container, and I talked about the uh, potting mix. And let's talk about, uh, do you need to put a support on the white Champaga? You can tell right there, you see that right there? I put a support on there for my white Champaga because when I first bought it, it was very small. And it's. I think the reason I got it for a good deal is that uh, the one guy was moving away and he wants to get rid of it. I bought it pretty good, pretty cheap. And there's a reason for being cheap is that um, the one he gave me was very little curved, curved on the side. So it doesn't grow straight. So I had to put a stake on it over, over the years to keep it, keep it upward. And so far it's doing great. I mean, if you look at the bottom, I don't know if you can see it. Let me move this one away. You can see it, see? The bottom to the top, it's pretty straight. I mean, not as straight, but it's better than before. I'll show you before and after pictures. And um, especially if you live in the windy area, why Shampaga has a tendency of sn snapping the um, branches. Although, remember this plant is more 
doable in the tropical area where there's less wind, humid, hot all year round, and they can bloom all year round. But for us, like for me, it's in zone six. So I'm pushing my luck. I mean, I try it. So if you live in zone three or two, um, good luck. But anyway, so let's recap real quick for the pot, uh, for the pot I recommend for the small one, kind of like banana shrub right there. You want to use clay pots. It's really, really helps the root develop. And I'll, you'll see the picture I post up there um, for this white champaga. This size right here, right there. Remember the video I made before? The, all the leaves are gone. I told you leaves will go back. Don't worry about it. They, white champaga grows really fast. The, this one right here, it's only been three years. If I were to plant this outside in a tropical area, it would probably grow a lot bigger than this. But anyway, it's, it's just growing the pot right now. So use clay pots if possible. And the second thing about it, it's um, fertilizer. or well, not fertilizer, but let's go potting mix first. Potty mix, try to go with more aesthetic mix and drain, well drained mix. So 30% pot, uh, perlite, 50% peat moss, and then 20% uh, sphagnum moss that I use. You can use coconut husk or something, but well, you know, like uh, old dry leaves too, works well, works pretty well too. Now the last thing is a uh, fertilizer. Why Champaga really likes organic fertilizer, but here's the thing, in a container, fertilizer attracts, organic fertilizer attracts bugs. So I don't like to use that. So I use the, uh, what's that, Osmo coat. Uh, let me show you a screenshot. Uh, anyway, I'll just put it up there. Uh, Osmo coat uh, uh, fertilizer, slow release. And sometimes I do add a little bit of uh, rice water just for the heck of it. And I, I get rice water easily. So rice water, I don't know, uh, about, that's about it. That's about wrap up most of the stuff. Uh, if you have questions, just post it uh, below and I'll try to answer them. Like I say, I haven't updated this channel in a long time. Not because I don't want to, it's just that uh, life is busy.